नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल हैव अ कोलैब डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ ट्रेनिंग डेटा एंड मॉडल कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ लीनियर रिग्रेशन मॉडल इन माय टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस आई फाउंड दैट स्टूडेंट्स ऑफन गेट ओवर ब्लेम्ड विथ मैथमेटिक्स ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग बट वेन दे इम्प्लीमेंट द सेम मैथ्स इन प्रोग्रामिंग they find it much easier to understand the concepts and what is happening under the hood in machine learning algorithms so in this collab we will implement two components one is the training data and second is the model so we will be recording this collab in two parts in the first part we will be we will be covering the training data and the second part we'll talk about model let's first import all the necessary libraries we import libraries like display math and latex for proper rendering of mathematical equations in colab we write these mathematical equations in form of latex then we import numpy which is a basic python library in which we'll implement all these components we do not use any other fancy library for implementing these algorithms because the focus is on implementing these algorithms from scratch so that you understand exactly what happens in each and every step of these algorithms we use a couple of plotting libraries like matplotlib and seaborn to visualize different aspect of the model training let's run this cell to import all the necessary libraries let's take a quick recap of these components as we discussed in the lectures recall that training data contains features and labels and labels are real number in case of linear regression linear regression computes the uh, the label as a linear combination of features in vectorized form it can obtain labels for all the example at once by multiplying the feature matrix with the weight vector let's first create a training data set so in real world training data set will come from some kind of a process or from a database that is already constructed or the data that is already collected as part of some business process but in case of but in case of machine learning techniques course we will be using synthetic data sets sets will be relying on the synthetic data sets for uh, demonstrating different machine learning components there are a couple of advantages of this synthetic data set we we know exactly how the data were generated we know the parameters of the data generation processes and we can verify easily the param parameters learned by the model whether they are matching with the parameters used for the data generation process so in this case we are going to use a um, Uh, we are going to use a data set containing a single feature and of course a label and label is a real number here so here we calculate the label in form of a linear uh, regression model with parameters w0 and w1 and we multiply uh, the feature vector by w1 we add the bias unit and we also add some noise so that's how we obtain the label y so y is equal to w0 plus w1 into x plus some random noise and x the data set is generated by randomly sampling n numbers and multiplying each of this number by 10 we use number of examples to be 100 and we use a value of 4 for bias and value of 3 for the weight uh, w1 so we know exactly the parameters of the data generation process that is w0 equal to 4 and w1 is equal to 3 and later we will see this will be useful when we uh, let's say train the machine learning model we can compare the parameters or the weights obtained from the model training and we can compare them whether they are uh, equal or closely matching to the ones that are used for the data generation process so let us generate a data set of 100 examples let's quickly check the shape of the training sets of the training data for sanity so we see that 
the shape of the feature matrix is 100. Remember, we are using a single feature. That's why feature matrix is actually a vector in this case. In real world data set, feature matrix will be a matrix which shape, you know, number of examples, comma, number of features. And the shape of label vector is 100, comma, right? So, you know, note that both of these feature matrix and the label vector contains 100 examples each. So, this is a sanity check that whether we have labels available for each and every example. Once we obtain this data, next we divide it into two sets, one is training and test set. We will set aside about 20% examples for testing. For this job, we use a specialized function from sklearn library called train underscore test underscore split. This is the only function that is used as an exception to the otherwise uh, implementation from scratch that we are demonstrating in this collab. So this particular function takes the feature matrix and label vectors as input along with the percentage of test uh, test data which is 20% in our case. We use a random seed in order to create uh, a reproducible implementation. So this particular function returns the training and test splits of the features and the labels. X underscore train is the training feature set, X underscore test is a test feature set, Y underscore train is a training label set and Y underscore test is the test label set or test label vector. Let's perform the training test split and quickly check the shapes of the uh, shapes of uh, different uh, uh, you know outputs that we get from this function. So we we match you know we, we check whether we have same number of examples in the feature matrix and in the label vector and the same thing for training and test we do it we do do that comparison for both the sets training set and the test set. So here you can see that both the feature matrix has got 80 examples and label vector also has labels for 80 examples and remaining 20 examples are uh, set aside uh, for tests. So there are 20 uh, examples uh, in, the, in the test feature matrix and the test label vector contains labels for 20 examples. Got it? So, so this is an important sanity check and you should include it uh, in, your, uh, in your work. Let's quickly check the first few examples and labels. We look at first five examples. So these are the features corresponding to the first five examples. We are using a single feature so you will see uh, five numbers uh, in the in the for the for the first for the first five uh, elements of the feature vector and we have five label or uh, the label values for first five example. So the first example has the value of the feature as 5.36 and the corresponding label is 20.07. The second example has a feature value of 4.05 and a, a label value of 16.79 and so on. So let us visualize the training set in order to gauge the relationship between the, the, the features and the label. In this particular visualization we have the feature value on the x axis, remember we have a single feature, so which is x1 and the label value on the y axis and the training points are denoted by uh, blue dots here. So this particular uh, training point has uh, this particular value of x1 and the corresponding value of y which is the label and so on. So these are uh, 80. Uh, points from the training set that we have plotted over here and uh, you know we have uh, you know use the feature and labels uh, to plot uh, these points. You can see that there is a roughly linear relationship between the feature and the label and we will try to model this relationship with a simple linear uh, regression model with one feature. It has got the form of y is equal to w0 plus w1 x1. As discussed in the lecture, we add 
a special dummy feature x0 and set it to 1. We create a helper function for that. We create a function add underscore dummy underscore feature that takes the, the feature matrix as an input and it appends a column of ones to this particular feature matrix which corresponds to the dummy uh, which corresponds to a dummy feature right so we have we use uh, np dot ones and we uh, create a column vector uh, of of number of examples exactly equal to the examples in the in the feature matrix let's write a test case to test this function it's a good idea to test your implementations because when you do that with different inputs you know we get to test whether our function works for all kind of test cases and when our function passes all possible test cases we become more confident about our implementation and this is especially very important for us because we are implementing all machine learning algorithms from scratch so we have uh, you know demonstrated um, a few test cases to be specific exactly one test case for each of this implementation i encourage you to think about more test cases and implement them to test these different functions that we're implementing from scratch so for this example for this particular function we take two examples with three features the first feature uh, has a feature vector uh, which is 3 cross 1 because we have got three examples and the first example is denoted by x superscript 1 the first feature has got value of 3 second has got value of 2 and third has got value of 5 the second example is denoted by um, x superscript 2 and remember this x is bold face because it's a vector right it's a small case bold face letter so it denotes a vector and it has got the first uh, feature has got value of 9 second feature has got value of 4 and third feature has got value of 7 recall that we we actually uh, you know uh, pack all these individual feature vectors into a feature matrix of shape n cross m where m is the number of examples and m is the number of features remember this is the shape of the matrix before adding a dummy feature to it and in this particular feature matrix each feature vector corresponding to each example is transposed and represented as a row vector so we have this is a feature vector for the first example for the second example so on up to the nth example and each of this feature vector is transposed and represented as a row vector in our current example this becomes our feature matrix becomes 2 cross 3 matrix we have two examples each example is represented with three features so we will be transposing each of the feature vector that is x1 and x2 and they will be represented uh, with two rows so let's uh, you know replace um, you know uh, let's replace this with the actual uh, feature vector so x2 cross 3 the feature matrix becomes uh, 3 to 5 and 9 for 7 remember this is the feature vector corresponding to the first example which is now marked as a row vector which becomes a row vector in this particular feature matrix and the second row corresponds to the the feature vector corresponding to the second example now let's add a dummy feature to it and when we add a dummy feature to it uh, you know we get a resulting feature matrix of size 2 cross 3 plus 1 so 3 is the number of features that we have and we add a dummy feature uh, dummy feature to it so that is this one corresponds to, a, corresponds to a dummy feature and when we add a dummy feature to it we essentially uh, add a column of ones to the feature matrix so the resulting feature matrix now has got a dummy feature in addition to the features uh, of individual examples so let us uh, use this uh, example the one that we uh, constructed by hand and verified it uh, in unit test case the unit test case has roughly three 
uh, different parts. In the first part, we set up the unit test case. We give the inputs. So here our training matrix is uh, specified. We are using exactly the uh, the same feature vectors that on which we did some kind of computation here. And then we call uh, the function, the dummy feature function, uh, the add, add dummy feature function with this training matrix as input. And then we check the shape of the resulting, uh, resulting matrix with dummy feature and we also check its content. So here the resulting matrix should have a shape of 2,4 and uh, you know um, it should have entries on, on the first row it should have 1, 3, 2, 5 as uh, the first row and the second row should be 1, 9, 4, 7. So we, uh, we test uh, our function with this input and let's test it and see whether the test case passes. Yeah, so okay, so we got okay from this. So it ran one test case and it passed. So this function is working as intended, at least based on this particular test case. Now we will, uh, you know, call this function on this another feature vector where another feature matrix rather where we have two examples. Each example is represented with two features. The first example has values of 3 and 2. Second example has value of 5 and 4. And when we add a dummy feature, you can see that the dummy feature is added and the resulting matrix now has a dummy feature. Let's process synthetically generated training set to add the dummy feature. We check the content of the training feature matrix before adding the dummy feature and after adding the dummy feature. So you can see that before adding dummy feature, the feature matrix was indeed was indeed a feature vector because we have just a single um, a single feature, and these are the contents of the feature uh, vector. And after adding the dummy feature, we actually get a proper feature matrix. And the feature matrix has uh, shape because we are looking at first five example. It has got five rows and it has got two features per example, the dummy feature and the actual feature X1. So this was uh, how, uh, you know, we do pre-processing on the training set by adding the dummy feature. In the next video, we'll look at implementation of linear regression model.